Honkai Star Rail has been out for a little while now, and now that a lot of us are getting settled in, I wanted to make an important video talking about the potential value of light spending. Hi there, my name is Blossoms, and today, as I said, we're going to be going over the potential value of light spending in Honkai Star Rail, as I made a similar video in Genshin Impact, and a lot of people found that useful and helpful, so I wanted to do the same here, especially now that uh, I have a little bit more experience, because that video was a couple years ago, and I've been kind of doing the same thing in Genshin Impact since, so I have a little bit more experience with that kind of thing. And there's also just a little bit of a different nuance to light spending in Honkai Star Rail than there is in Genshin Impact. So I thought that was valuable to go over as well for those of you who just might not know for whatever reason. Before we go over anything in the light spending category, I first wanted to iterate why you shouldn't spend any money at all. So yeah, the video talking about the value of light spending is going to start with why you shouldn't spend money at all. And that is just because this game is so free to play friendly. It is genuinely a joy to see how free to play friendly it is. Um, this entire row of characters I'm hovering over are all free characters and they're all rock solid and I use them in my teams regardless of how many five stars I may have. Uh, they're very good characters. The only real problem with free to play, I'd say at the moment is likely the fact that that a lot of people just don't have a second healer and whether you're spending money or not a lot of people are struggling with that and that's why so many people are going for locha but i digress regardless the free to play characters are very strong the main character is also incredibly strong and useful i basically don't take the main character off my team because i just enjoy using them that much but yeah you get all of these characters you can get ching Tui, and then not to mention that in the uh, beginner banner there's a beginner banner when you start and you get the ability to just get one of the five stars pretty early on in the pity so you're going to be guaranteed a five star at some point with some wishes that you're easily going to get and you'll get one of these characters and then on top of that way later in the game as you eventually do 300 of the standard banner wishes with wishes that you'll just earn as you play uh you'll be able to select one of those five stars anyone that you want so yeah you you could get one of those healers or something that i was talking about so yeah being free to play is pretty viable and that's just on the character side not to mention that on the weapon side you're actually pretty set too uh you can get five star light cones over time as you earn some of the currency from wishing not to mention that the herd store in the simulated universe also has five star light cones available and while they might not be as insane as something like these limited banner weapons they're still really good and their stats are comparable so i think it's highly worth noting that being free to play here is substantially better than in most cases and that the only real reason to spend money is to well save yourself on some resource grind and maybe make it a little bit easier to save for some characters and maybe get an extra character or two and just for a small comparison like some of the bigger youtubers like enviosity or tectone or anything they've both been free to play this whole time and their accounts are very comparable to mine and they're clearing memory chaos in a very similar way i have a slight edge but that's a about it and i wanted to stress that point and drive that point home really hard before we start talking about potentially spending some money but for those of you who still want to spend a few dollars and you're just wondering how valuable it might be well here we go so first up, what is a light spender? A light spender is generally going to be classified as somebody who uh, frequently buys the express supply pass here, as well as the battle pass here. And those are going to be your two primary sources of being considered a light spender. Now, the occasional light spender might top up every very rare blue moon or something. But as I said, for the most part, you're just going to be on the express supply pass and the battle pass. So what do they do? Well, the express supply pass here is basically the same as the Vulcan Moon, but if you don't know what that is, well, over the course of 30 days, you're going to get 90 Stellar Jades per day for a total of 2,700 Stellar Jades, and on the initial purchase, you get 300 Oneric Shards, which can total out to 3,000 Stellar Jades if you convert those shards if you would like to, which is one of the highest value things you can do. If you're going to spend money at all in this game, this is what I would recommend for you to get. And uh, just for a perspective, if you're going to top up, if you want to get 3,000 gems total, you're going to 
to need to spend $30 and that's with the bonus. If the, when the bonus gets cut in half after you buy this, I haven't done the math. I don't even know if that, you know, works out to 3000. It might be close or it might be a little over, but regardless, you're spending $30 instead of $5 for 30. The only catch is this is over the duration of 30 days. So this is certainly the highest value thing you can get, the biggest bang for your buck. This is what is directly going to help you save for pot uh, potential limited characters and stuff. And if you spend any money at all, this is what I would recommend you get. Now, for the other side of light spending, that is going to be the Battle Pass. And the Battle Pass is actually has a free to play section and a paid section. The free section here is on the top and the paid section is on the bottom. And you'll see the biggest discrepancy between the two is just the the amount of stuff you get so at uh, the later levels of the battle pass here for a big comparison you get a six books at the on the free section but then at the bottom you get 24 and uh, the currency and the light cone uh, XP materials are the same here as well. In regards to that, you just get way more on the paid side. So that's going to be the big kicker for the battle pass. You just get a ton of resources and it is going to save you a lot of resource grind. But what else does it really do for you? Well, on the free section, you actually get access to the most valuable part of the battle pass, in my opinion, and that is the self modeling resin. This allows you to craft relics with whatever main stat you want. Uh, the paid side does help you out with actually funding that, though because you need 100 relic remains and uh, for those of you who don't know that converts the 10 salvaged five star relics which is quite a few especially in some of the early game so it can be a little hard to accumulate those so getting 200 for free is quite nice because you could use the other 100 to just craft a random thing uh, even though you can't choose the main stat you can still choose what piece it is and that is quite nice you also get these little uh, boxes at the bottom that are going to help you get the different materials that you need to level up your traces which is pretty nice but perhaps one of the biggest differences between the free side and the paid side is going to be the fact that you can get a battle pass weapon. These are all four star weapons that are all quite solid. None of them are quite broken or anything like none of them are insane, but they're all quite solid and very good options for you to get on the battle pass. So you can't really go wrong here. As I said, though, you can earn some five stars over time, so I really wouldn't worry about it too much. But these are all rock solid. And over time, you'll be able to, of course, get those um, ascensions to, you know, max them out and whatnot. But that is probably one of the bigger differences is you get those light cones. You don't have to rely on gotcha or anything. And they're quite solid. So now that we've gone over them, we can easily discuss what the value is in them. And it's basically just the ability to save up more for characters and potentially get more characters as well as save you on some resource grind and maybe be able to spend your uh, trailblazer power on other things like farming more relics than the average bear would be able to and that's pretty much about it and i would say the uh the express supply pass is probably the most worth it thing just because uh you can save for more characters you can get more characters and that's quite nice you're going to be able to have that luxury instead of just relying on whatever free ones they send your way so then that way when hoyoverse sends two characters that you want your way then you'll be able to potentially get both of them as long as you're you know saving wisely with the uh actual currency that you're getting and that that is really going to be the big kicker you're going to have to save wisely i know it's difficult i do want to emphasize though that the resource stuff i was talking about is no joke because it gives you significantly more freedom to build more characters and have more fun with team compositions so if that is a very valuable aspect to you then maybe the battle pass will be something that you want to go for because it does really really help in that department um especially if you're like me and you just can't decide on who you want to build because you want to build every Everybody because they're all fun then it's going to be much better for you you can see i have uh what four five six seven eight characters all ascended to their final ascension here um i don't have them all leveled up all the way but getting them there was certainly a lot easier because of the resources i got from the battle pass and beyond even that then i still have other characters that are fairly ascended as well and they're not too far behind just because i'm terrible at resource management and that's a big reason i need to be the light spender but yeah you can see it's it's highly helpful here it gives you a much easier time in leveling up your weapons as well as leveling up your traces and your characters and the freedom to level up more of them uh to have more flexible teams which could be valuable for memory of chaos 
So if your battle resource management and team flexibility is important to you because you find fun in the game by crafting different teams and you want more freedom in doing so, then that's going to be a big reason you'd want to be a light spender as well. So those are the biggest reasons and another kind of small one that I just wanted to touch up on. If you're like me and you're a nine to fiver and you're just a very busy person, you can't play all the time to, you know, stay up to date and have all your characters as farmed as they possibly could be then uh, being a light spender helps with that too because you can't dedicate as much time as, as maybe some other free-to-play players would so if you want to you know stay up to date stay competitive with uh, having your characters up to date or whatever even though this is a pve game uh, then being a light spender will really help you in that category as well. And it'll just save you a lot of time. If you miss a day or something, then it's really not going to be as big a deal as it would be if you're a free to play person and you're like, oh, no, I didn't spend my trailblaze power. So it really does save you that time on the resources as well. I think that's an undervalued aspect to getting those resources. And, uh, you know, if you're working hard and you're making the money and you don't have time to play the game, then you might be able to justify spending at least a little bit on the game as a result. Uh, to reward yourself or something but hey as i said don't let me tell you how to spend your money and you really don't need to to have fun or be successful in this game and uh but that's pretty much it for me I, I think i covered just about everything i want to let me know if you think there's anything more valuable to being a light spender in the comment section below i would like to hear your thoughts let me know if you thought this was valuable or helpful to, to your decisions and um, if you're going to be a light spender or just free to play or maybe you're a giga whale or something i'd like to see all of that and more down below but other than that my name is blossoms and i'll see you guys in the next video peace